time to spill the secrets. is Universal Secrets with Tiffany Mack and Kevin Hale. It is Monday night. You know what that means. It is Universal Secrets with Tiffany Mack and Kevin Hale. Coming at you on this uh, April 1st, April Fool's Day, 2024. Uh, Surprise, we were going to have a show, but... Tiffany's on vacation. Tiffany's on vacation. <laughs> I tried to tell you, take take the time. I know. I, I still, you know, with all due respect to to you, Brent does allow me 90 minutes of visitation with you mm-hmm. a week. That's something, you know, I take care of on the back end. But good to see there you. you. Go. Good to see how, you. How was your uh, Easter? The holiday? It was it was great. We actually got to spend it with my parents. So um, we had a, a big day and and it was just perfect. So, yeah. How was yours? Fine. It was chill. I got uh, some of my kids out of town. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got to hang with my mama. And uh, I went over there thinking we were going to have like a nice lunch. Mm-hmm. So And on my way over, she calls me. She's like, you know, we haven't had hot wings in a while. We used to stop and get some like. Okay. BW3s? Huh? BW3s? No, actually, it was, was a it? place called Indies. Oh, yeah. Okay. It, and a little spicy, too, huh? Spicy. Yeah, yeah. the spicy. Today, uh, my body reminded me that they yeah. were spicy. Yesterday. Yeah. And we're getting older. We're getting you got to take your Metamucil and your Fibercons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Along with a good shot of bourbon, I guess. A uh, little bit. Yeah, I do have it. There you go. Uh, we are streaming on all our platforms. Uh, the chat room is a lot and kicking as usual. Great mm-hmm. to see them uh, in there. Tiffany, you again, you know, this is one of the ones that uh, you had arranged. Um, uh, a show that, you know, to to look in the, the vast, you know, the universe, the cosmos and you know, talk about, uh, we're going to talk about time travel tonight and everything that goes with it. Joining us tonight as a, our guest co-host, Simply Irresistible. <laughs> That's a great. That uh, is. I, that I was had, a Maria. Maria the, got that. I had the uh, the damn music. I forgot to cue it up. Oh, man. Dun, 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 dun. How are you, Brent? Well, how are you guys? I'm good. Yeah. We're, like, remind me, how far ago. apart are you all right now? Oh, 25 feet. 25 feet. Okay. <laughs> but she's got the, the room, and I've got the, the closet. Yes, yes, yes. It's not really the closet. He, I just you, tossed you, him in the other one. You, you'll get to come out later. So. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. All right, tonight, Tiffany, spill the beans, spill the secrets. What's, uh, what's going on with our show tonight? So tonight we're doing something uh, that is has been on my docket for a while, and it's it's one of the things that I've been enjoying personally. Um, I follow this guy on a few different platforms, and and really like getting all of his little blurbs. Um, we've seen him on Ancient Aliens. He's been on you know all different uh, programming on Gaia. He is a director and um, documentarian and an author. So this book that I have recently received, which can you even see it? Of course it's not. It's like phasing in and out. The background. So, yeah, that, you so gotta, travels I'll, through time. One of your kids to take it to Brent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll let you have it in a second. Okay. But, um, you know, he's he's a retired Air Force. Love that. Uh, you know, I love my military boys, and Captain yeah. Sipley knows. So uh, he's not military, but we're going to – oh, shoot, I just lost where I was going. Completely. That's okay. Let's bring anyway, him on. Let's yeah, bring him on. Bring him on. 
Mr. Wright. Mike. Mr. Uh, Mike how Ricksecker, tonight? how are you today? Oh, doing really well. Mm -hmm. Trying Did to come up a with a good Easter? April Fool's gag for you guys, but it escapes me at the moment. <sighs> Yeah, well, I pulled one of those on my kids today. I told them I was pregnant, and they were not surprised. <laughs> They're like, yeah, right, Mom, it's April 1st. <laughs> uh, I thought it'd be sort of funny. Did, now, did sure. Brent know, realize it was April 1st when he heard that? No, he, oh, he laughed, know. and he's like, yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> Feed me another one. She's going to kill us if, if she did get pregnant in the house. True. Oh. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we had a good conversation with my mom today uh, as we took a walk, and... Um, I said, do you remember when you were 40 and you thought you were pregnant? And she's like, yeah, that was really scary. I was like, yeah, I remember saying, I am not going to take care of your baby. So, <laughs> you know, because that was what I heard when, you know, for years, you better not get pregnant. So anyways, we, we went through that little moment of our history. And I don't think that Brent would appreciate it uh, today. So it just it's didn't it didn't really hit hard enough for my kids to be like, oh, that's a possibility. So yeah. it is what it is. So Mike, what, what would have been your your April Fool's? Show? Well, that's what I was saying. I, you know, I don't get so much into the whole April Fool's thing because I, I pulled a really big one on a friend of mine back, way back, like in eighth grade. And it, it caused a really bad rift between us for a while. So it's like, yeah, you know, it was funny to everybody at the moment, but it caused more harm than good. Uh, we ended up fixing the friendship, but you know, so I really don't do it so much anymore. Just maybe an off the cuff comment like I was hoping to come up with as I came in here. But yeah. if you come up with one along the way, just toss it out there. Yeah, you, we'll still, got, we you last. still got another 59 minutes or something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. I might phase in and out. That'll be my April Fool's. <laughs> Where did you go? So you know, we I've really got a, a a really good picture of time travel through your book, and I would like you to explain what actually was the most fascinating thing to you when it came to time travel. What brought you to write this book? Yeah, you know, it's a uh, it's a topic that's always fascinated me. Um, my one of my favorite movies growing up was Somewhere in Time with Christopher Reeve and Jane Seymour. And I just love the concept that he was able to will his consciousness, will basically send himself back in time through the power of the mind. And, you know, that kind of always stuck with me. Of course, you know, grew up on other movies like Back to the Future and a lot of pop culture kind of uses that element. So it's kind of always been there. But as I started doing other things so like researching the paranormal, writing uh, a number of different books on the supernatural, the research that I did there, as well as some of the other research I'd done in some of the more esoteric topics of the world, like ancient Egypt and what have you, um, I started seeing that a lot of this different phenomena that we might call hauntings or ghosts or something supernatural, uh, may actually be some sort of time-related incident. Not to say all hauntings and ghosts and things like that are, are time travelers or time slips or something like that, but some of them, I believe, actually are. And so, um, and so I just kind of um, kept that open mind as I continued my research and started writing other books. And it was really a trip last year uh, to to Egypt. We have uh, two are coming up here again in a couple of weeks. I'm about to uh, head up out there again. But um, you know, I was going to handle time travel in a larger work called Connecting the Universe. And when I was out in Egypt last year, just something struck me when I gave this big presentation that no, Connecting the Universe is actually an entire book series. And it dawned on me as I was you know coming up with that idea, okay, I'm going to handle each of these topics I was going to put in this one book, give them their own book. What do I start with? And it hit me that it would be time and time travel. Let's get to the very basics of the universe, you know, start from a nice foundation and work up into the other topics because it's really, you know, that's time is that river that we're trapped in and it kind of um, really dictates how our universe is run. But, um, it, it has, it, it's not as rigid as we think it is. So in your research, have you encountered any historical accounts or myths that hint at these blips 
going through our history? Yeah, you see a lot of accounts in history, like the Versailles time slip is probably one of the most famous ones. Um, I really like the story of the famous German poet Goethe, and he recounts this in his book, Dick Tongue and Wahrheit, which is in English, Poetry and Truth. And he tells the story of what, you know, one day he's walking down the road to the town of Drussenheim. He's having an affair with a young woman there, and as he's walking down the road, he's lost in his thoughts about her. And then all of a sudden, he sees this man on the other side of the road in this gold trimmed gray suit. He turns to get a better look at the guy, and all of a sudden, he completely vanishes. He disappears. And this is like a split second image? Yeah, it's like a few seconds or whatever. Notices the guy, and then he disappears when he tries to get a better look. So, you know, of course, it stands out to him. Bizarre. What the heck was that? Nothing he can do about it. So he continues on to the town. Well, a couple of years later, He's walking down that same road again in the opposite direction, and he's coming across that spot where that incident happened. And he recalls the incident, and then suddenly he looks down and dawns on him, wait a minute, I didn't see some other man at that spot. I saw myself because I'm dressed in the gold trim gray suit right now. So it was some sort of time slip incident. Uh, what's interesting is if you look up like top 20 cases of doppelgangers, you'll find this on those lists. But it wasn't really a doppelganger, even though, yeah, it was an image of himself, but it was really himself at another point in time. And then we and have we, to- We think of a doppelganger more of being, you, you've said like a dark twin or- a, Yeah. It's sort of a, do, do you really believe that that would be a, a negative connotation to that entity, to that being, to that second self, or well, how do you relate that? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, we tend to fear what we don't understand, and then we uh -huh. attribute some different legends and lore to these different things. So when we look at doppelgangers, double walker um, in German, a lot of these ended up getting attributed to spirits that were trying to mimic a person or the Norse Vardigers were uh, those beings that uh, really it's almost like a time delay. Like you see a person walk into a room, they pass right through. Like, okay, there goes Jim. And then a minute later, it's the exact same thing plays out. There goes Jim again, the exact same thing. And so the Norse called those uh, Vardigers. We would call that like a doppelganger type case. But in the case of Goethe, um, you know, this being most likely a time slip, we have to ask ourselves, you know, what's the catalyst? How did it happen? And we have to go back to the beginning of the story when he said that he was lost in, her, in his thoughts. And really, it was a type of meditative state. We do the same thing when we're driving down the road and you know, we kind of zone out and miss our turn, miss our exit. Oh, shoot, got to turn around and go back. Um, it's a type of meditative state. It's not a full meditative state. You're going to be fully meditating while you're driving. You're probably getting an accident. Well, um, it, it's, it's like daydreaming. I mean, I was yeah. told as a child, snap out of it because you get that dazed look and you mm -hmm. like know that there's somewhere else altogether. And right. that's, that sounds like it's it's more of a daydreaming episode, self-meditative state, putting yourself in a right. very yeah. calm and peaceful place and just zooming out. Yep. And he was able to tune into his own frequency at that and you know, moment. I think, I think that a lot of children are more able to do that. Yeah. Because it's sort of the whole idea behind the paranormal and supernatural. A lot of times we tell our children not to... Um, to ignore it, to that it's fake, that it's not real. You're not really seeing what you're seeing. But this guy, this guy had an episode that was very unique. Mm -hmm. So he he thinks that he saw himself, and this was how many years later? Do you think? What did it? Um, it was story? a couple of years later. I don't recall the exact number of years yeah. after it, but we're talking. Um, this happened like in the late 1700s. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he wrote about it in the early 1800s. But uh, you know, there's a couple of years in between the, yeah. the two incidents. But yeah, he was basically just tuning into his energy, because mm -hmm. uh, everything comes down to energy, frequency, resonance, vibration. And he was, he was able to accidentally tune into his own uh, energy at that spot at another point in time. And you know, when he, and he got a glimpse of it, but then when he decided to get a better look at it, it broke him out of that slightly meditative state and he lost the image.
So he was no longer no longer synced in with that frequency. Let me uh, bring Brent in. Brent, um, enlighten me. The speed of sound and the speed of light are they're not the same, correct? Not even close. No. Not even close. So for the for everyone who's like me that doesn't know, what right, is? Right. The, tell me the different or definition of both. Well, I, I mean, the speed of sound changes from sea level all the way up to you know higher up in the atmosphere from 600 miles an hour to, you know, 450, the, you know, the higher you go, the, the less the speed actually is required to break what was called the sound barrier. And light has always been a constant. It was 186,000 meters per second, I think. Is that what the, I think the actual number is? And that's, that's a constant. And when you're flying, are you flying at, Typically, what speeds um, are you flying? Well, we fly at Mach. So um, the higher you go, the airspeed actually that's indicated starts to decrease, even though you're still going the same true airspeed. So the higher you go, you start running off of Mach. And so we fly, my airplane, we fly 0.85. So that's eight tenths the speed of sound. Noted. Yeah. Right, I'm a, I must have skipped that day in class. <laughs> <laughs> Well, while you're talking, Brent, you you've had an experience. Yes. You know, that will well, I time the... travel all the time because you know I used to do this flight from Honolulu to Sydney, and it was a ten hour flight, and I landed five hours later, and I can't remember if it was the day before or the day after. And I'm like, huh, where did that day go? You know, <laughs> but no, but I think you're talking about when I I think I saw a portal. Yeah. Um, I think that was in 2015, and it was I, I guess there's NDAs. Um, kind of surrounding all that, so I can't give the exact location, but we'll just say it was outside of Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. And the actual property where this happened, um, there had been numerous uh, for hundreds of years, back from when the Native Americans lived on the property. There's always been, um, they said, moving lights on the property. Um, and there's all kinds of, there's a rich history of, of uh, natives on this property and there's cairns everywhere um, still to this date. And uh, people still now see these lights. But and, it's a place um, of energy. It's a place where yeah, there's a lot of it, power. Yeah, it was. And, and what I had, what I saw that day, um, it was out at night and uh, just walking through the woods with uh, no lights or anything. And I saw a pinpoint of light. And it was it was extremely bright. It was it was intense. This pinpoint of light, and uh, I looked at it for about maybe four or five seconds, and it pulsed out to about a five foot in diameter uh, circle. It wasn't quite as bright. Each time it pulsed, the intensity of the light decreased dramatically. So it pulsed out, and then it closed back down. Pulsed out to about ten foot in diameter. Pull, and then it closed back down. It went up to about fifteen feet in diameter. And when I got out to that, it went all the way back down to that pinpoint light and it stayed in that point for a few seconds and then just disappeared. Mm. So. Is that, do you remember the, and I'm bouncing around here and I'm, my apologies, but it just made me think of that story. Uh, Mike, you probably know this. The the guy that was flying through the Bermuda Triangle, they mm. called it what, electronic fog. Is that mm -hmm. what he called it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, Mike, based on hearing his story, what, what would you say to that? Yeah, it's it's interesting. I certainly believe that there are portals that can lead us to other dimensions, other realms, other points in time. Uh, you know, NASA has admitted, yes, we, we do have portals up in space. Uh, that's at least as far as they're willing to admit, and they call those X points, which is really where the uh, Earth's magnetic shield runs into the solar wind and at that at that point there they're called an x point and they have these portals that open and close up there uh varying sizes there's kind of uh you know there's no consistency to how often they open but essentially what they do is they allow the uh, protons and electrons from the sun to make it to the earth faster than normal um, and so and then we see those as those brilliant auroras uh, that like the Aurora Borealis mm -hmm. and the Aurora Australis. Um, so yeah, you know, portals certainly do exist. Um, you know, Bruce Gernon's story is absolutely fascinating when he talks about the electronic fog and he ended up covering a hundred miles in 
three minutes with he was flying a little Cessna airplane. Uh, you know, pretty wild story. Uh, Brent's story is quite interesting, you know, especially talking about an incident out in the woods because we have a lot of these like missing persons cases all over. And you know, some people that do make it back will talk about stories where, you know, they heard a sound out in the woods, stepped off the path, like took two steps to go check out what the sound was. You know, couldn't find whatever it was and see what the what made the sound. Turn around and get back on the path and the path is suddenly gone. And they're lost in the woods for for days so you know there's something that they stepped into whether it was a portal or some sort of time slip something happened that took them to another destination or another point in time or something like that so you know these and they can manifest in different ways whether it's just simply energy or whether you can see light as well the one thing that i was wondering about the the portals was is is there um certain regions where they tend to occur more than others is there are they static or is is certain there access points and right yeah okay um yeah and this is a topic i'm going to cover a lot more actually in my next book that i'm working mm -hmm. on right now so it's a good question i so covered it a bit days. yeah <laughs> well i covered it a bit in my book alaska's <laughs> mysterious triangle um, because you know, we have these triangle areas all over the world where we have these different, you know, places that we call uh, supernatural hotspots. And really what's going on, it comes down to the Earth's core, which is, you know, a spinning ball of uh, molten iron. And as it spins like that, it produces a, uh, a magnetic basically our magnetic shield, you know, it produces that magnetism, expands out from the center of the earth. And as it passes through the different layers of the earth, it, you know, the mantle, the crust and so forth, it interacts with different metals and minerals on the way up. And depending on what those minerals are and how big the quantity is, it can create these different areas that have this high magnetism. So yeah, we have areas around the globe that you know, we consider these hot spot areas that are known for uh, you know, vortex energy that are known for strange disappearances or uh, more supernatural activity, cryptid sightings, all, you know, all this different strange phenomena happens in these locations. Now, as far as being static, no, because the um, that magnetism from the earth isn't a constant it, it ebbs and flows it's more of a, a, a pulsating wow. type energy um, so you know even like when the the sun hits us it's kind of like it's back and forth you know we have this pulsating magnetism coming out of the earth same thing from the sun that has this you know we have massive solar flares like mass coronal ejections uh, but they are varying sizes you know no no two are really the same so uh, so that's why it's not just static but it's still more energetic there on, uh, we'll say, a uh, you know, more placid day uh, than other areas of the globe. So when it comes to movies like um, Stargate, you know, that was mm -hmm. one of the ones that I really yeah. liked when I was younger. And But the, it was uh, certain spots all over the earth that they can connect that energy to and just walk on through to another dimension or universe or planet, whatever the case may be. Do you believe that we can create a portal such as this, a Stargate in essence, or do you think that we already have? Well, you know, my uh, Egypt tour that we're uh, doing here again in a couple of weeks is called the Stargates of Ancient Egypt. So uh, yes, <laughs> uh, yeah, they, the ancients had some sort of technology, um, you know, specifically in Egypt. We, we talk about different stargates all over the, the globe, and I've, um, in, in various facets, I've, I've talked about some of those, but my particular focus has been Egypt. And you actually see written all over the place the, the term stargate. So they had this form of technology, and as you study the way that they harnessed energy there and funneled it into these different structures, you, you can completely understand, okay, this, yes, this is the stargate room. And how that energy uh, was funneled into there. But uh, yeah, there are locations around the globe where you see uh, more of you know, this type of um, concentration. Uh, when we look at stone circles and, and things like this, um, 
you know, just for an example, a couple of years ago, I did a tour in Ireland, Dromba Stone Circle. You stand right in the center of that circle. And you just talk and you can feel that reverberation of this circle is thousands of years old. The stones are weathered down. Some of them are missing. But today you can still feel that. So just imagine back in the day being in the middle of that. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's one of those that I wish we would, we have so much advanced technology and we have so much uh, advanced know-how and engineering. If somebody were to concentrate, you know, put effort into trying to recreate one of these, I think we could, we could do it. And, and there are people, scientists on the quantum level, trying to recreate wormholes in the lab. So there are some areas in which they're trying to do that. What wasn't the one of those uh, UAP reports that came out in the last few years? Wasn't one of the you know they had their line items of things that they're exploring and stuff in portals, wormholes? weren't that wasn't that part of the uh, admission that they're studying? And so somebody at that level in government, whatever, is believing it, taking it serious. Well, yeah, it, it's not a new concept, though, either. It's it's no. not. No, they, they're trying to make you these days think that it's uh, you know, UFO. No, the UFO fact that they is, officially uh, put it out there. Is yeah, it's like they make, they're trying to make you think it's been the last, you know, only 20 years. No, no, no. Yeah. We've been talking about this for decades. Um, but yeah, the idea that you know, UFOs and UAPs are moving in and about using portals or some sort of interdimensional technology. Um, and we've been speculating about that for a long, long time. And yes, the government is looking into those things. They're, even though they have their narrative that they're that they're playing out there, they do look into those sorts of things. Well, Skinwalker Ranch is supposedly, yeah. you know, one of the hot spots. That's, and that's one there where you know they have pulled strange metals out of the ground. They do the, they've done the LIDAR detection there. I've gotten some really fascinating and strange uh, anomalous energy readings there. So, uh, you know, some people speculate, oh, there's a UFO that's buried in the Mesa or something like that. Well, I, I don't know about UFO, but uh, I believe that entire Uinta Basin has some sort of, maybe it's metallic, maybe it's crystalline, but some sort of mineral deposit there that creates these massive waves, kind of like what we were talking about before with the uh, magnetism coming up from the Earth's core. It's hitting something there and creating this strange activity. And, and some people believe it might be a meteorite, which I think that's probably um, a little bit more reasonable than a buried UFO. Uh, but yeah, that's there's definitely something substantial going on there. Question. Can portals suck the energy from one side to the other? That's an interesting question. Can they suck the energy? Well, I mean, it's connecting two different points. Um, it's, it's serving as a gateway. So most anything could, could, could pass through. Yes, physical objects, but could it take energy from one side to the other? Sure. That, I believe that's a reasonable assumption. Yeah, and I, mean, I can actually add something to that because um, when I was talking about the brightness of that portal that I had seen on that day, um, I said it was extremely bright, and as it pulsed out, it, of course, became less intense in lumosity. However, it didn't really feel like it was giving off. Like, like the whole encounter lasted about 10 seconds, maybe a little bit more than that. But the one thing that I really noticed about it, and, and, and when this happened, it, was, it became very opaque, um, I could still see through it, but what I did notice, even though it was pitch blackout, this um, light mass, if that's what you want to call it, didn't seem to exude light. I mean, light by definition means that there's something being emitted. However, it didn't seem to cast shadows. None of the trees around me, it almost appeared as though light was being sucked into this area, which sounds odd because it was dark, so it's very hard to explain it. But I did notice, and the odd thing about the whole experience that I had is it didn't seem to cast light as much as it seemed to suck light in, even though there was really no light present, if that that's makes a, it all any sense. It's a bit, it's a bit ineffable, just sort of unbelievable, un, undescribable, it sounds Yeah, like. well, that was Very the whole difficult. thing about it. I mean, I'm an educated man. I've done a lot of stuff in my life, and it was just so odd to have seen 
what I saw on that day because it didn't fit the bounds of physics that I know of. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just, I would have expected because there were some trees in the area, I would have expected some kind of like shadows and stuff like that. But it, it, the light didn't produce that. It was odd. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. And going back to the Hitler days, he, he delved into the whole time travel, time machine thing too. Oh, yeah. And whether you, the you oh, the, the yeah, yeah, the yep. bell, yeah, yep. and supposedly, you know, the story is too that that bell, um, what crashed in Pennsylvania? Kecksburg. What was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah Kecksburg. What, yeah. yeah, but what year was it? Like in the seventies. Seventies. Yeah. They so. said it was an SR seventy one at some point. You know, an engine off of that. And some people said no, it was the clock. And so who knows? Yeah, it was some. It was something that was acorn shaped. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, the uh, <laughs> I do have a question for you. So, when it comes to the alien, the ancient alien theory behind um, time travel, do you really believe that we are um, able to view into other? dimensions or other can we view through a portal into a, on to another planet to d visit other beings do you think it's a possibility yeah absolutely um i mean the the idea of um a wormhole it's you know the einstein rosen bridge using uh einstein's theory of general relativity so according to our science today yes it it is possible to do that um now, we have up to 11 hyperspatial dimensions. We're on the fourth, um, which is time. And we are able to freely access everything else that is below us. When something from another dimension comes into our plane of existence, it's a little harder for us to conceive it because we don't have the proper geometry to, re to really be able to view it correctly. So this is why you know, some of these different entities that we may see may show up as a shadow a or some sort of wispy yeah, thing or, or yeah, some people report seeing like a shimmer type person. Some of these UFOs and UAPs may be moving in and out uh, of different dimensions and that's why we're you know, maybe just seeing them as an orb or some sort of streak or whatever it may be. Um, we're not fully seeing what is actually there. So, uh, but yeah, I believe it's, it's accessible and it's a matter of, again, for me, everything coming down to frequency, resonance, energy, vibration, to me, it's a matter of being able to tune into that proper frequency to be able to move to those other dimensions and get a better glimpse of, of time and everything uh, below that. We talk about, you know, time travel, uh, and I, my first reaction is always somewhere in the past. What about the future? I mean, what's is is this? I mean, if you're if you're able to do it, mm -hmm. is the situation the same going like, forward? Can you go backwards and forwards? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this is where I talk about uh, stack time theory. So uh, the idea that all time is here and concurrent. So we're just talking about dimensions and we're on the fourth. That means fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and on would be able to readily see all of time. It's all right there and they can move in and about that. So if you take where you're sitting right now, every moment that has happened is happening and will happen. They're all there right now, past, present, future. And if you're able to tune into the proper frequency of each of those moments, each where I get with stack time theory is each moment is like a photograph on a tall stack of photos. Uh, but if you're able to tune into uh, one frequency to another, then you'd be able to move in and about through time. Something like a time slip is like when two of those moments resonate at the same frequency for just a moment, we get a glimpse uh, of, of one, whether it's the future or the past. And those are some of the more interesting uh, occurrences because uh, those people from those other moments in time will recognize and acknowledge the people from the other point in time. So, so they're kind of looking at each other, wait a minute, I see you. Yeah. 
now I gotta ask this question too. If you can go, if you could time travel, can you really alter? Say you're going back in time. Can you really do something to alter the future? Uh, you can. There are. Um, Talking about the grandfather theory. Yeah, grandfather, grandfather yeah. paradox, yeah. Um, or Polchinski's paradox, which to, which is the scientist's way of explaining the the grandfather paradox using. I, 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 that one always cracks me up. I don't know that one. Can you share it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Grandfather Paradox. And this was written. I know what that is. Yeah. Scientific writers. Go back writers. in time, meet your grandfather, something happens. Something happens. He dies. You, you don't get. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You yeah, we see that. that play out in Back to the Future. Right. Um, Polchinski's Paradox. So, in the 1980s, um, there was a Russian physicist that uh, devised the his last name was Novikov, so it was the Novikov consistency principle. And he basically said that while um, time traveling is possible, that being able to change something in time isn't because essentially the math doesn't work out properly. He brought it all down to math. So a couple of other physicists, uh, Kip Thorne and Joe Pol Pol Joe Polchinski were having a, a back and forth discussion about this. And Polchinski basically came up with this um, scenario in which uh, you shoot a billiard ball through a wormhole. And since you know, we already kind of discussed that, uh, you know, it's based on Einstein's uh, theory of relativity. So, you know, we're, we're good on the science there. You shoot the billiard ball through the wormhole. The exit point of that wormhole is lined up in such a way that it comes it comes back out at just before the moment the billiard ball goes into the wormhole and at such an angle that it knocks the billiard ball off course so you have this scenario in which you have the billiard ball that's already gone through the wormhole knock itself off course which is essentially the same thing as what we're talking about with the grandfather paradox but this is acceptable to, to physicists because it's using nine sign Rosa Bridge and is using a billiard ball rather than dead grandfathers. It's the same thing. <laughs> same concept. But it cracks me up. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. So and we see um, you know, we see these things play out. These different changes, um, different paradoxes that can come up in um, in our daily lives. Uh, People talk about the Mandela effect, which some of it is just, you know, misremembering branding. Uh, you know, nobody's going back in time to change the spelling of Fruit Loops. <laughs> it's, it's a little too trivial. Um, yeah, there are some very generic ones that have been popping up throughout the years. Yeah. That's the Berenstain Bears and, uh, right. you know, the spelling of certain things was is mm -hmm. always sort of funny because a lot of times I don't remember them the way that they're saying it was anyway. So right. I don't know which and, timeline I'm supposed to be on. <laughs> yeah, <and laughs> Which wavelength am I supposed to be accessing right now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the fascinating <laughs> thing is that, you know, so many people across the world have remembered it. A, a different way. And there are some that, I mean, aside from some of the different spellings and brands, there are other ones that um, have maybe come up over the years. there's just a lot of generics. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, but I've had it, I've had it happen to me, uh, my mother and then several others. And I include that story within uh, the book. And so it has caused me to question, okay, you know, is somebody going back in time? It doesn't have to be to change that specific thing. You, know, you can drastically alter the course of time if, let's say you're a time traveler and you're just there to watch and observe and you decide to walk across some street. Well, maybe there was a car that was going to turn down that street and had to stop and pause to let you walk across the street. Not a big deal for you, but maybe with that particular car, it caused them further on down the road after they made that turn to either get in an accident or maybe not get in an accident that they were supposed yeah. to. Right. So, yeah. It, yeah, just a little thing, you know, can actually have a big That's ripple. That's a great point. A split second mm -hmm. for a lot of people can just, you know, change the course of your life. You know, yeah. So. Well, on that note, what precautions should you take as a time traveler? What would yeah. be some of the precautions? <laughs> Yeah, try not to touch anything. <laughs> Wear your well, seatbelt. 
<laughs> yeah, wear a seatbelt. Um, yeah, it's it's one of those where I I I, I do believe that we have these subtle changes uh, that that do uh, that do alter our reality. I, I believe reality is always in motion, past, present, and future. I do believe the future can influence the present. Given, I'll give an you example. You had a situation that, that happened when you were a child, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Because yes, I want to tell I the story. Know. Yeah. I do know. So, so Jen was, is your wife? Uh, fiance. Yeah. We're going to be married next year. So May, tell us, May the 4th. Tell us what happened. Yeah. Um, May so the 4th. We, yes. Was that like a. May the 4th be with wedding. you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for the record. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to have fun with it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we've known each other since first grade. Mm -hmm. um, and there was this one day in first grade, we're at the uh, library in the school. And I'm just looking through a, a stack of books, to try to find a, a book to read. And all of a sudden, she comes right up next to me and kisses me right in the cheek. And I, you know, I'm all flustered and, you know, blushing and all that. Like, what the heck was that? <laughs> you know, Why'd it, you do uh, that, girl? <laughs> yeah, she threw me for a loop. And we hadn't had much interaction at all up to that point um, this was like our first major interaction it's this kiss on the cheek um so yeah we were in first grade together fourth grade in seventh grade we 12 years old kind of quote unquote went out for a month i was too scared to hold her hand <laughs> so, did you did the you write rink? the note did you write the note in school will you go with go out with me yes or no God. um it was it was more of a couple of our friends set us up <laughs> <laughs> um, her friend Lisa had expressed to my friend Matt that Jen was interested in me and, you know, would I be interested in her? Okay. You know, we called each other on the phone and uh, we sat next to each other on, on the curb. On and the, said, uh, you're cute. Mount. No, you're cuter. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was too chicken to hold her hand. So I got dumped. Yeah, um, but it didn't stop her in the end, did it? It didn't. It didn't. No, it's the, you know, the universe. Um, so the following school year, right at the beginning of eighth grade, uh, I moved away. And we had no contact for 21 years until social media comes along and we reconnected. And at the time I was married, she was with someone. But, you know, we just kind of caught up and, you know, hey, how you doing? Um, and I did ask her about what was the thing with the kiss on the cheek? And she was like, I don't know, something just told me to kiss you on the cheek. Okay. So um, just recently here, well, two years ago, um, I was no longer married. She was single at the time. She decided to come on my tour to Ireland. And boom, we, we hit it off. And we've been together ever since, getting married. So we decided to go back to our old hometown. Her parents still live there and um, you know, revisit some of the old haunts. And so we went back to our elementary school, which is now a performing arts center for the college. And we're just walking around uh, the premises, looking in windows. Oh, yeah, that's where first grade was, and you know, all that stuff. So we get to the, the window of the library and we're looking in, we're pointing because it's only about 10 or 15 feet away where the spot was. It's like, oh, it was right there where the kiss happened. And Jennifer just playfully starts yelling through the window, kiss him, kiss him. And we're kind of laughing. Oh, that's funny. That's cute. But then it dawned on us later on. Like, Wait a minute. She had said when she was in first grade, she something just told her to kiss my cheek. So was it her 40 something year old self calling back through time to tell her six year old self to kiss me? Why wouldn't it be? Exactly. It, we would call that a bootstrap paradox because there's no origin to it. But uh -huh. um, and that's the way these these sort of uh, moments in time work. God, did you imagine the pillow talk? Mike Mike's pillow talk game. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Let me digress a little bit. Is mm -hmm. um, are black holes black holes? Mm -hmm. oh, let me say that right. <laughs> black holes. Time black hole sons. <laughs> Black holes. Yeah, that's a great uh, song, by the way. It is a um, good song. Are, are black holes time machines? Yeah, it's it's kind of funny because um, I got hit up um, about a week ago. A bunch of people started uh, 
messaging me with this article that had come out, um, Ronald Mallet and his research. And it's it's not new research. He's been talking about this for quite a while, being able to use a black hole as, as a time machine. I actually address it at the very beginning of chapter 11 in, in the book, uh, Travels Through Time. And yeah, I mean, black holes do bend space and time. Mm -hmm. And the idea is if um, you were to essentially slingshot yourself around a black hole without passing across the event horizon, which at that point you'd be totally lost, uh, then you could, and got back to earth, <laughs> then you'd be able to uh, move through time. You'd be able to go back in time as far as the black hole was created. So if the black hole was created around uh, the time of the ancient Egyptians, you could use that time, that black hole to go back to that point in time, but not all the way back to the time of the dinosaurs. There's a couple of problems with that, though. One, I mean, we're nowhere near a black hole. You know, I mean, we're talking thousands of light years away, mm -hmm. so we're not getting there anytime soon. And the amount of time it would take us to get there, using our current technology, Newtonian physics, we would long since be dead by the time we even got to the black hole to attempt this thing. Mm -hmm. But let's just say, for funsies, that we did get out to that black hole. You know, we tried to uh, slingshot ourselves around. Even if you don't pass across the event horizon, the gravity is so strong that there is an effect that scientists call spaghettification, that essentially the gravity would stretch you out like pasta, and that would essentially destroy your craft and kill you. So it's, yeah, I mean, technically you can use a black hole as a time machine. It's just not really feasible for humans to, to use that. So that's sort of what I was thinking earlier when um, I was talking about a person going through a portal is, mm -hmm. do you think that our fragile human bodies would be able to be a physical form on the other side, the other, the other side of that portal? Do you, would we physically as our human body be able to do that? Or would it only be our consciousness that went over? And maybe that's why we see a lot of apparitions who mm. um it, it, with the ones that interact with us maybe well i do believe that um a more reasonable form of time travel for us is using the consciousness again that idea of being able to tune into different frequencies different moments um, i believe will be something that's more consciousness related meditation uh, to be rather able than physical. to do that, rather than physical mm -hmm. but that said, yes, there are still physical portals. And I think we have seen some of the repercussions of that without really realizing it. So take a lot of these uh, missing airplanes, loads of stories all over the, uh, the decades. And some of those, when we did the Alaska Triangle television so show, uh, there was we speculated that you know, some of these actually passed through portals kind of you know we had bruce gernon on there talking about what he experienced down there in the bermuda triangle so if some of these airplanes are passing through portals and disappearing where are they going are they going to another dimension are they going to another point in time and if they are going to another point in time then we have to ask ourselves okay what point in time you just throw out an arbitrary number or something like okay let's say it went back 500 years in time well, what would that look like to the indigenous people of the area if all of a sudden there was a, a giant like uh, Douglas Skymaster in, in the sky? They would have no context whatsoever of an airplane. They would just see this as some very large, loud bird, bird in the air. Right. So is yeah. this where we get airplanes that have passed through these portals from our present to the past. Hmm. And it sort of reminds me of the, the Star Trek um, movies, the more recent ones where hmm. they were on a planet and all of the beings were all humanoid, but they were reddish brown. And these, you know, guys from another planet, another place, another universe mm -hmm. coming and visiting and you're not supposed to interact with them. They're too primitive. They're gonna think you're gods, not, right. you know, what you really are. So uh, it's it's interesting to to see how so much of our our science fiction can actually relate to what is actually going on today. Yeah, our, our science fiction is wonderful because it gets us 
uh, it gets us talking about these different topics and gets the uh, creative mind churning on what is possible. And a lot of our science fiction ends up becoming science fact. And a lot of the mm -hmm. technology uh, that we saw is in, in like the older movies and shows we now have today. You know, that that idea you know, was formulated back then. And, and some scientist or engineer over the years was inspired by that and decided to actually create it. So, yeah, and, and that's, you know, another reason why, you know, we're, we're trying to develop wormholes in the lab. You know, we, mm -hmm. we have these ideas, we have these concepts, mm -hmm. and they did, on the quantum level, connect two very small black holes with the wormhole and just passed a message through. So when it comes to stacked time, could stacked mm -hmm. time hold the key to understanding deja vu, potentially? Yeah. Um, in, in a couple different levels uh, with deja vu. Actually, I just posted a clip on this on um, on TikTok and Instagram earlier today. So a, a couple of different ways you know, deja vu is going to work. One, um, you know, a lot of times we have those dreams that are you know premonitions and end up they end up coming true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and they a week, a month later. Wow, I had a dream about that. Um, it, to me, that is a form of time travel where the consciousness has moved into the future and gotten a, a glimpse of something. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes our dreams are very fragmented and we only remember like a couple seconds of something. And so some of those deja vu moments are where our consciousness did project into the future, got a, a piece. We don't fully remember the whole incident. So mm -hmm. later on, all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, that, that, that's familiar. But another it's way, also, we, it's always a very weird triggering mm -hmm. feeling too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause it's so familiar, but you can't quite mm -hmm. place it. Mm -hmm. But another way that we can experience deja vu with stacked time. So if all time is here and it's ever present, and if you also believe in reincarnation, which I do, mm -hmm. that means not only are you here right now in this life, but all of your other lifetimes, past and future mm -hmm. are here as well. So when you walk into a room where you have you suddenly have a deja vu moment, it could be that one of your other lives is right there with you right now at that moment, whether it was past or future is also there with you. And that could also be why you're experiencing a deja vu. Wow. That's, that's deep. So I like there, that, I <laughs> but then I it like, leads me mm. to another question. Uh -huh. So when you have, when you have these permanent, let's say we're having dreams, mm -hmm. dreams that end up, coming true, like a few days later, yeah. whatever, when you wake up, same thing happens in your dream that it did. What do you think is actually going on? Do you feel like maybe, how, how do you think these dreams can be so realistic and be, is it just because it's part of our consciousness and in our consciousness could be everywhere and anywhere as well? Yeah. So I, I, do want to make this clear some dreams are just dreams yeah sometimes it's just a story playing out yeah. in your head right. um but some of them are elements of time travel so yeah. your your brain goes through different uh wave state states as you get into uh different sleep states and there are times in which uh you will hit a certain uh frequency that your consciousness can essentially, for lack of a better term, float around a little bit and be able to explore. And that can uh, move across time as well. So you can experience something from the future or even the past uh, when your mind or your consciousness enters into that state. You can also tap into what I call eternal knowledge. Some people call the collective unconscious. Some people call the Akashic records. It can also tune into uh, that as well and pull down all kinds of different ideas and information uh, might give you a creative spark. So when we are in those sleep states, there's a lot of interesting aspects of our universe that we can tap into. When it comes to out of body experiences, um, you know, I've I've had a few of those mm -hmm. and it it's very unnerving being able to fly around or breathe underwater, whatever the scenario is at yeah. that time. But do you feel like maybe that's a form of time travel as well? It can be. Um, you now you can free float within our, we're talking the fourth dimension. So you can free float 
here as well and just be on the same timeline uh, or in the same moment and then come back. But when you project, you could also project to another moment in time and be able to experience past or future as well. So it's um, what I tell people is um, if setting an intention, if, if you're looking to do some master projection, um, do you want to ask or project and visit a loved one or do you want to ask or project and get a glimpse of the past or future? You know, set that intention before you go in. Kevin. Turning on my mic, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it looked we're, like you were, we're thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of Just rounding maybe. third and heading for home uh, with our time with Mike. Yes. Mike's uh, got his book, uh, Travels Through Time. I'm sure it's on uh, Amazon, Barnes mm -hmm. & Nobles, all that. Yeah. So definitely check it out. I want to ask you, if, if someone from 3024 mm -hmm. showed up and you had access to this person, what would be some of the questions you would ask? Um, when's the next time the Red Sox are going to win the World Series? No. <laughs> How did we make it this far? Or will the Browns ever win the Super Bowl? I don't, you know. The real questions. The real Thank questions, you. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's a good question. Um, usually I get it asked the reverse way. You know, what, what would you like to go see from the past? Um, you know, from the future, I, I, if we have a human coming back from that year for one, uh, it's like, okay, we made it. <laughs> um, would it be a we, human? We didn't annihilate point, ourselves. A thousand years in the future. Yeah. Is that right? I'm doing the Yeah. That's yeah. That, <laughs> right. Um, one year, one year, Kevin, it's fun. Yeah. I'd be one interested year. to, to learn if we you know, accomplish interstellar travel, uh, if we've been to some, you know, remote planets what they look like if we you know interacted with life forms on the planet then those plants what do they look like um probably those type of questions here's a good one is keith, keith richard still alive? of course <laughs> not even a question of course he is <laughs> um still yeah. playing still playing still touring Another. I thought that Elvis was like a pastor somewhere, Pastor Jim or something, yeah. right? <laughs> Imagine what an AI version of you would be like. Oh. <sighs> Maybe I am an AI version of myself. Yeah, could be. Well, if we're in a simulated universe, it, you know, we, we are. Um, yeah, that would be another thing because we are, we're doing so much with AI right now and there has been research and development into creating an AI of a person. And these type of projects right now are, um, what they'll do is they'll sit down with a person and they will just gather as much information as possible about them. They'll go through you know, all their social media profiles. They'll go through their family history, grab a you know, bunch of um, photos, video, all this stuff, and basically compile a massive database on a person and develop an AI based on that so that if you were to ask this, say it's Mike AI, if you were to ask Mike AI a question, it should be able to respond very similar to the way I would. And it's this type of stuff is in development right now so that um, it's expensive. But if you have a loved one pass away that you could kind of keep the essence of them there. And, and you can cryo freeze their body for later. Yeah, you know, there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well yeah. is it Michael Jackson going to be? He'll be there, right? Yeah. I think Isn't he's buried he in his or? backyard. Okay. I can't remember. There's so many different stories. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah. What does that technology actually work? The cryo freezing. It seems rather barbaric to me, but yeah. Wait, what, the, what 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 is a thousand years from now going to look like? I mean, is it Jetsons? I mean, well, you know, right now, what we got? Who is it? Is it Bezos? One of them that that you can take trips into space. Yeah, I mean, at, by yeah. then, will that be like one of the things that you can just and send your kids oh to yeah you'll Mars. go back in time you know as you know as a well Disney within World. our lifetimes there are going to be uh hotels and, and things like this in space that's already in development mm -hmm. um yeah so we'll we'll be seeing that here soon 
and probably a planet or two colonized colonies. Yeah, I mean, how far out? A thousand yeah. years from now, how far yeah, out have years. we gotten? Right. You know, yeah. that that's a good question. But just off planet orbiting Earth, that that's within our lifetimes here. Yeah, I'm gonna pilot them. You're gonna pilot them. Yeah. <laughs> he'll he'll fly them. That's my yeah. next gig. Your next, your next life gig. I'd yeah. jump on that. <clears throat> uh, well, good Mike, stuff. thank you so much for coming on tonight. We really appreciate all of your your hard work, and your book is fantastic. I love following your work. You, you. are a, a bright mind, and just keep at it because you've you've got some amazing uh, stories that you share and uh, we really appreciate your commentary so we will put a link in the bottom for his uh, websites and where you can get his books and thank you very much for joining us yeah absolutely uh, it was a great conversation i really appreciate you guys having me this evening it was fun thank good you. luck on your tr upcoming trips thank you yeah and uh, I, I don't it, you're pretty brave for going to Egypt. I was banned from from going to Egypt. I was in Greece working for the DOD and they're like, nope, no travel to Egypt. No travel. Dang it. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I got to see all the old ancient Greek sites, but I didn't get to go to the pyramids. Uh, so are you still banned or can you do that now? Uh, no, I could go now. It's just a matter of getting my husband to fly me over there. Ah. <laughs> Throw that in his face. <laughs> Just give me the airplane, honey. I'll fly you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Nice. We'll work on that. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mike. Good stuff. All right. Have a great evening. Thank Take you. care. Thank you. Take care. That was great. I yeah. love that. Um, yeah. I'm going to throw the same question to you guys. Uh, okay. It, it, you know, if, if a, someone from a thousand years, you know, in the future showed up at the Sipley compound and you had to ask questions, Br Brent, are we boring you? What's going on here? No, nah, I'm just sleepy. <laughs> He's sleepy. Mm -hmm. Sippy. No, sippy. I would like to know how we made it. How we yeah. made it that far. You know, I'd that's, be surprised that's... if we actually made it. That is a really good question. I know. We yeah. let him go. Well, I'm perfect. taking Dang for it. granted, yeah, yeah, that, you know, we've set aside our, you know, Right. Oh, politics you, maybe there's a, maybe there's already it? another arc waiting to carry our genetics to another right. time and just eliminate all of us peons. Mm. Yes. Are you? Yeah. You know, huh? <laughs> you need your baby. Need his bottle. <laughs> what? I don't sleep at ten or eleven o'clock every day like you did. Funny. <laughs> Well, I did want to tell you all a, a quick little story. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you <laughs> we've talked about this before, and um, I'm going to say it again, Kevin. Um, so when, when I was little, I had this vision of a girl that looked like me. Remember? Do you remember the yeah, story? I remember. So I, I just want to know, was that myself? Was it my daughter was it another um another being from another place who had no relation to me in my grandmother's well, house it's just, uh, maybe i don't know i i uh you don't want to throw that out there willy-nilly i don't think but i do feel like there was some kind of um a a glimpse through a through a to another dimension or another time. So that's that's one of my questions that I've always been in the back of my head for the past 35 years. Mm. And and it's it's something I think I'll always wonder about. But Brent, have you felt like you've had any episodes where you had missing time that you couldn't account for? Um, well, I've told you some of my private things about seeing people, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, no, I don't really think I've had anything where I was totally like, oh, where did that go? You know what I mean? Without explanation of being just tired or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, falling asleep. I don't, I don't have anything cool like that to add. Cool. Kevin, have you? No, I don't think so. I, I still live vicariously through you, too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Brent, during your flights, have you, have you ever flown, you know, I don't know, through or around the Bermuda Triangle or something similar, you know, yeah. Alaska, the Alaska Triangle. All, Have all you? The, 
Flown through all that crap, yeah. And anything? Nothing. Did no. you? No? No? <laughs> no uh, goosebumps? No. Uh, no. No. I, I did get touched in the airplane once. I forgot about that. Wait a minute. This ain't the Mile High Club thing. <laughs> no. I think she wanted it. But, uh, are we still on the show or is it just like... No, we're still on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, that's my soundbite for the night. <laughs> tell, tell us your little story about that. Well, <laughs> so we still are on... <laughs> okay. I thought this was just us talking. Sorry for all the yawns. <laughs> no, we do have some airplanes that were X J L L or J A L, you know, Japanese airline airlines, and we did have one where a flight attendant, when it was operating for Japanese airlines, they hit some turbulence. One of the flight attendants died, and they a lot of people have said, "Hey, that airplane stuff, weird stuff happens." And I just remember one night, just bounce along, 35,000 feet. All of a sudden, I feel somebody tap on my shoulder, kind of like, hey. And I turn around, and, and I didn't see anything, but it was almost like, hey, did you want some coffee? You know what I mean? So, yeah. Oh, that wow. happened. And the guy I was flying with, we had the same airplane, I don't know, two or three weeks later. He said that he also, when he was starting to nod off, he felt like somebody... So, hey, you need some coffee? So. That's sort of awesome. Yeah. But. Mm. All right, Tiffany, uh, out of due respect for you guys, you all are on vacation. This is actually was kind of turned out to be uh, good for um, Mike to keep it at about an hour. Mm -hmm. and I want you guys to you know, carry on with your night, family. We'll travel back well, to the East Coast later. How's that? You, you will. And yeah. um, we're you know, we, on the East Coast. What are you talking that, about? That, no, we're not. We're on Central Time. No. Oh, you're talking. Justin is Central. Yeah, is we're it in Central. Yeah, we're we're going to yeah. okay. head back over there at some point, but so, I mean, we're still on the East Coast. We're not even. Yeah, and uh, I, I do hope uh, that you guys get to um, meet up with Claire and I would Michael like and. Yeah. Mila and Jacqueline. So yeah. um, good stuff. Uh, Brand, it's always good to see you. The chat room. I uh, appreciate everyone hanging out with us. Tiffany, we are supposed to be doing starting Tuesday nights next week. Right. So we need it to, used to be well, Tuesdays, didn't we? Yeah, it used it to be. Used to, well, so we'll be going back to Tuesdays. <laughs> Tiffany, Tuesday was, you know, I miss saying that. And, right. and, and actually, a lot of times I'd start the show in the chat and I'd say, Happy Tuesday. And it was, you know, Monday. So, but Mike, <laughs> yeah. Mike was great tonight. Good yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah, and he's all over. He is a just a he's a good person, and he he seems very sincere, mm -hmm. believable when he mm -hmm. shares his stories. And mm -hmm. um, and he yeah he's on uh, a lot of the shows. So yeah, good. For and him. definitely check him out on all his social media because he does put out um, a lot of intriguing and thought provoking commentary. And it's thought provoking it's is right. Yes. Yeah, it's always yeah. very interesting. Um, so I definitely follow his work. Um, so yeah, I wish we would have done a little bit more with the whole. I know Tiffany hates Interstellar, but that whole yeah scene towards the end where you know Matthew, Matthew. McConaughey's um, characters going in and pulling the slots out of all the different time to try right. to find the right time slot where his daughter was to send the message. And, Matthew I mean, McConaughey, isn't that, uh, that's not Interstellar, right? Yes. Yeah. Matthew McConaughey, isn't mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to say, I thought Matthew McConaughey was in the one with, um, damn it, um, Jodie Foster, right? No, that was Contact. No. I know, but I thought Matthew McConaughey was in that one with her. Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. I have no idea. Small talk. No, but we didn't get to like all the dimensions. Like I've heard thirteen dimensions now, all the way up to I've nineteen. Heard Seventeen. I've heard a billion and five. But I mean, I don't know how, how they can really even know. tell. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, we'll have to have him on again because I did want to talk about like missing time with in relation to abductions. Mm. Um, yeah. But we didn't get to that today, so we will get to it next time. All right. Yep. 
Universal Secrets doing this on our, uh, I guess maybe the last Monday night will uh, should be uh, showing up in your uh, streams uh, uh, next Tuesday, which is what the eighth or no ninth, ninth. ninth April. Yeah. Okay, Brent, always good to see you, Tiffany. Yeah. Uh, you as well. You all have a nice rest of your vacation. We'll chat and figure out what's going on next week okay. everyone in the, in the chat watching appreciate you all appreciate the support universal secrets signing off for the night peace out guys This has been Universal Secrets.